The third question this week is, what is the difference between the unconscious mind and instinct? Now, um, this is an interesting question, and I hope I can answer it relatively briefly. Um, this question certainly relates to psychoanalytical theory, um, but I'm going to start by addressing it in, a, in, in broader terms. Um, it, the, the unconscious mind, as defined in cognitive science broadly, uh, is merely unconscious cognition. I've said already in regard to questions one and two this week that unconscious cognition is going on all the time. Unconscious cognition is automatized cognition. It's information processing that doesn't require attention. It doesn't, it's not salient. It doesn't matter uh, uh, enough to, to need um, uh, the affective arousal that, as I say, gives rise to consciousness in, the, in, in, in general. So the unconscious mind in the general sense is just ongoing cognition. Now, of course, that's something very different from instinct. Instinct is not cognition. Instinct is built-in action programs for dealing with matters, biological matters of universal uh, significance in relation to survival and reproductive success. There's a fear instinct, an attachment instinct, a rage instinct, a sexual instinct, and so on. Clearly, these things are different from cognition. So that's a general answer. A more specifically a psychoanalytical answer goes like this. The psychoanalysts uh, don't believe that the, that the unconscious is just cognitive information processing. They think that there's another part of the unconscious. They call it the dynamic unconscious as opposed to the descriptive unconscious. And this dynamic unconscious concerns matters of heartfelt significance, which nevertheless um, are unconscious. And the, the word that they use for this part of the unconscious is also the repressed the repressed part of the unconscious, that is to say this dynamic unconscious, merges in psychoanalytical theory with the instincts. So the instincts are these deep, primitive, um, uh, animalistic urges uh, and inclinations um, within the depths of our minds, uh, to which we add our own heartfelt, um, pressing, um, psychodynamic concerns, the repressed. And then above that is ordinary unconscious information processing, which the psychoanalysts call descriptive unconscious, and uh, you know, above that is consciousness. That's the, that's the standard view. But I actually don't, um, um, I, I don't think that this does justice. The Freudian view, uh, I don't think adequately describes uh, how it really works. When you look at it from the point of view of what we know um, in neuroscience today about instinct, uh, I think a very different picture emerges than the one that Freud described. The picture is like this. The part of the brain that performs instinctual functions, I've already enumerated some of them, fear, rage, sexuality, um, attachment bonding, these heartfelt things, the parts of the brain that perform those functions start in the upper brainstem and then have circuits ascending into the forebrain, which we call limbic circuits. Now, the upper brainstem and these limbic circuits which arise from the upper brainstem are not unconscious. They're conscious. They're as conscious as can be. They are where consciousness comes from. They are the raw ingredients of consciousness, as I keep on saying. So, unlike Freud, I do not believe that instincts are unconscious. I think that instincts are profoundly conscious. Think of them. Fear, rage, sexuality attachment bonding, in other words, love, you know, these are, these things are made of feelings. And what are feelings if they're not felt? You know, consciousness is feeling, affect is feeling, instinct is feeling, felt, affective, charged. Um, that's not unconscious. It's got nothing to do with the unconscious. The unconscious is the attempt to manage these feelings. Remember, cognition is intrinsically unconscious. So cognition binds these affects. You learn uh, uh, in relation to the outside world, in relation to experience, you learn how to manage these instincts, how to tame them. Uh, and the cognition uh, renders them less and less conscious. So a little baby is a ball of, of instinctual feeling, felt consciousness. Uh, uh, and then gradually, as it learns how to manage its feelings, how to meet its needs in the world, uh, in, in other words, as the forebrain cognitive mechanisms uh, mature, so the 
instincts uh, are less felt and they're replaced by cognition. So please be uh, aware that what I'm telling you is how I see it and where I think Freud was wrong. Freud was wrong to think that instinct and the unconscious are the same thing. That's not to say that there isn't an unconscious. There is an unconscious. It, 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 and I'm going to come in question four to talk about this a little more. There is an unconscious very much along the lines of what both Freud and uh, cognitive science talk about. But this has got to do with cognition, with representations, with the movie in your head that Chalmers spoke of in, 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 in question one. Instinct has to do with feeling, and it's conscious, not unconscious. Now, I wrote a paper, uh, uh, again, I'm going to give you a reference, which you can just Google. It's open access paper. Again, Google my name, Mark Solms, Conscious Id, Id ID. Mark Solms, Conscious Id, and the paper will come up. It's on exactly this question. 